Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Today, the walls of a small church in Washington, D.C. echo the sound of the Azan. On this rainy Eid morning, people from all walks of life have gathered here to pray. Some came with family, some alone, with smiles on their faces. I've been waiting for something like this for so long. I was very excited about it, so as soon as I heard about it, I knew I wanted to show up and I brought my family. We have family members that came from far out of town to join us for this, and it's something that uh, it's, it's exciting for all of us. As I enter, I can hear the takbirat being recited in female voices. An emotional Imam Dai greets everyone. I just want to welcome you again and thank you for coming. And my heart is really sad. I'm going to keep from crying, but you know. <laughs> the DC chapter of Muslims for Progressive Values arranged this unique prayer service. The organizer is Fatima Thompson. We have people here that are Muslim and non Muslim um, who might consider themselves secular Muslims. And we have people from every sort of subgroup among Islam, Shia, Sunni, Ismaili, Ahmadiyya, Sufi. As I look around, I notice a diverse group of people sitting together. The Imam giving the khutbah is Pamela K. Taylor. And we're here celebrating uh, the diversity and we're praying together like we do in Mecca, which is men and women all together. They don't have the barriers or separations. She reminded everyone of Hajj, the Islamic pilgrimage where men and women pray together. To me, this is very empowering because it reemphasizes the fact that men and women are equally uh, loved of God and we each have equal access to God. She urges everyone to read the Quran. The Quran is your book, it's your gift from God. And it, it speaks to you and to you and to you and to you and to me in the words that we need to hear. I decided a long time ago that I wanted to pursue Islamic studies, so I attended Harvard Divinity School back in the 90s. And at that time, um, there was a group at Harvard and they asked me to lead prayers back then, actually. And then we stand back up and then we go down into... She gives a demonstration for those who don't know how to do namaz. And then you sit up. And then the Jamaat begins. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. How do you feel about praying next to a man? Honestly, I'm a doctor. I've been working next to a man. When I'm working with the patient, I don't see who that man or woman is. That's how Islam is. I've been on Hajj. You don't see who's standing next to you, you just pray. Oh Allah, bless us each in uh, the area where we are, in the spirituality where we are. Help us to become better and stronger people. I don't think it's that different from praying behind a man. Uh, you know, we all have mothers and sisters who are very you know, influential in our lives. So this, I don't see this too, too differently from that. We're opening the planes and praying and getting together without walls, without putting us into a little tiny box. Of course, anything that looks different, anything that speaks differently than what people are accustomed to, they become fearful. But often it's just they're fearful of change, not because of the beauty that comes after the change. And that's how this special prayer service ends. Surrounded by smiles, hugs, and warmth. As you can see, the message is simple, to promote peace and understanding in a world where we are constantly faced with reminders of hate. I'm Shazeen Choudhury, Voice of America, Washington, D.C.